All right, good morning, everybody. So, just when gas prices has hit hit a high of a buck ninety one, I think that's the that's what I saw on the way to work this morning. <laughs> uh, but I got a twenty twenty four Honda Pilot. Doesn't even have five thousand kilometers on it yet. I only got four thousand four hundred thirty nine. You guess what? Gas light is on and it's completely empty. And you know why? Uh, because. As I said, gas prices have gone up, and it makes people go crazy because they're stealing they're stealing your gas again. Because <laughs> we had a we had a, a streak of all these people going stealing gas, and then the gas prices went down, and then uh, yeah, we stopped seeing people stealing their gas or drilling holes in gas tanks now. So, anyways, I'm still waiting for the parts department to uh, get here so I can get my parts. So I'm gonna just bring you along down underneath and show you where the holes are. I'm surprised they didn't try to steal this thing. This thing is, uh, maybe it's not worth a lot of money. This thing's, I'm pretty sure this is a post cat because this thing's warmer than the pipe back here because this is pretty cool. This thing's still pretty, it's retaining heat pretty good. Yeah, even the front is like a little bit cooler than the front or this thing here. So I think, I'm pretty sure that's a post cat. So they didn't try to steal that, but fuel tank is just right here. It looks simple enough. Uh, a couple straps might have to remove this thing here that supports the rear rear cross member here and uh here, here are the holes i guess these are getting smarter i guess instead of drilling one hole they drill two holes and they found out that it, it drains a lot faster that way so thieves are getting a little bit smarter <laughs> let's just say that uh but yeah still waiting for parts department to get here and then uh make sure i have my parts here before i drop the drop the entire fuel tank so the filler neck and everything is part of the fuel tank it doesn't you can't separate it from the fuel tank uh, like the uh, previous generation pilot which I did also um, yeah we've got to use one last time and they, they used the I guess the record chopped off the the filler neck and where I'm just like you, you, this thing's useless now <laughs> so it has to come out with the whole entire filler neck okay so I removed the back seat here so I can access the fuel pump but it's pretty cool when you uh, you know, work on a new car that you've never worked on before, especially how they change some things, especially like something like this. You know, you get a little styrofoam uh, cover here for the top of your fuel pump, I guess, just to help with uh, noise and stuff. So, they're trying to make the cabin even quieter, I guess. But, yeah. But, uh, yeah, other than all those plastic piece for your vents on the side here that you gotta remove to access the one one bolt that's covering it so you can take it off yeah so you have to remove all this to get to the one bolt on the seat to remove the seat so that's 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 my uh my uh my my gripe i guess so i just gotta disconnect the uh, just remove this cover and disconnect the fuel line from up here and i should be good and that's that's all that is the new one comes with one of these so I don't have to transfer it comes with a new o-ring and a new uh, new nut as well so all right so everything is done up top but some things that I want to mention like look at this they, they, they got this little bar here just like they got this to protect the fuel tank why couldn't it have extended the uh, fuel tank up to here right and then have more fuel capacity that way you have a, a longer range right especially if you're using these vehicles as like a uh, a road trip vehicle you know fill it up and then get like a thousand kilometers of range on the highway so I, I would definitely prefer the uh, longer longer range and the bigger fuel capacity so that that way you spend less time at the gas station filling up right all right so I removed all the underbody covering heat shield drive shaft and uh, we're pretty close to pulling this uh, fuel tank so something I want to show you which it didn't have it on the previous Honda Pilot is the vent goes through this body and then out the other side right right there and I think that goes into your charcoal canister or does it go up to the top I think it goes up to the charcoal canister somewhere there or does it go up to the filler neck but yeah this is your vent so they can make it disconnectable because the last one, I think it's just one long, one long, uh, I guess, pipe 
right? And uh, yeah, you can disconnect it here and then disconnect it from the fender liner on the other side. So yeah, just a couple of different different things that they changed on this Honda Pilot. Okay, so if new fuel tank is in. Actually, it wasn't it wasn't that hard. I think this is a lot easier than the previous generation of Honda Pilot. So uh, also got a tank of fuel over there too. So yeah. So everything's gonna go back in, and then I'm gonna put the back seat back in. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is a evap leak test before I completely finish this job off. Um, so I put in 20 bucks, and 20 bucks doesn't get you very much. Because that's like, I think 10 liters, so for you guys it's like three, not even three gallons. <laughs> that's like, like probably two, two and a half gallons maybe? Yeah, and then it doesn't even register uh, on the fuel gauge. So I guess... Uh, once the uh, your fuel gauge goes completely empty or shows empty, I guess there's at least uh, 10 liters or a couple gallons left in the uh, fuel tank. So, yeah. But yeah, gas is like a, a buck 91 a liter and it's gone up recently. So I, I think I'm going to see more of these uh, fuel tanks being drilled out. So uh, let's go to a uh, scanner. I think we have to warm up the car to do the evap leak test. Yeah. Oh yeah, fuel, fuel, fuel low. I know. <laughs> yeah. General. We can go to live data and see how much, what percentage of fuel level is in the tank, because just because it doesn't see it on the uh, fuel gauge, and I want to make sure that fuel gauge works, and. And our lot guy didn't only got us 20 bucks. So, uh, let's see. Read data. We have fuel level in here. Uh, after fuel driving, after fuel driving cycle. Hmm. Where is fuel level? Cylinder misfires. Might be at the bottom. A, B, C, D, E, F. F. Fuel tank pressure sensor, fuel cut, fuel diesel, fuel factory study value. Where are you, fuel level? Here we go, fuel level. Fuel level sensor. Fuel level average. Let's do that. Fuel level, we have 10%. So that's 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 good. So I guess there's 10% left. Well, there's 10% in the tank, but you know you uh, you show empty on the fuel gauge. So maybe if I just shake the car a little bit, you can see the uh, fuel level bounce around. So around 10, 10, 11 percent fuel in the fuel tank. So at least uh, I know that works. Now let's go back. I'm gonna go special functions. Uh, crank, auto, shipping, injector, consumption, current, history, right, crank, throttle, readiness, auto, stop, start, counter, clear, shipping mode, release, injector, learning, value, consumption, what? Uh, maybe it's an actuation test. Ah, evap test, there it is. Function test. Shift to park, stop the engine. So yeah. I guess uh, just for you guys who are doing fuel economy tests and uh, you know, just so you know on your Honda Pilot when the fuel gauge shows no bars left it actually has 10% left fuel left in the, in the fuel tank. You want to set the parking brake? Sure. Do that. Press OK. Check the fuel level gauge. Does the gauge indicate between the full and empty line? <laughs> it's on empty but it has 10%. Remove fuel, fuel filler cap. Okay, hold on, let me do that. Okay, so this thing has a capless system, so I just, you know, pull, push the valve. So yeah, this standard also does, uh, I guess it's it's been doing pretty good. The majority of the things that I'm doing at work with the scanner is, uh, it's, it's, it's doing what it needs to be done. Other than, um, uh, it won't let me 
it won't let me uh, calibrate the Honda safety sense. And I emailed the guy, and I asked him, "Hey, uh, I thought this thing was supposed to be. It works supposed to. Be, oh, it's supposed to work really good with the uh, Hondas, and it won't calibrate my uh, uh, Honda safety sense. It just tells you, oh, you re you are required to buy these tools and stuff." So I emailed about him, or uh, me emailed him about that, and he says, "Oh yeah, you got to upgrade it to the thousand uh, dollar scanner, and then uh, pay an additional four hundred dollars for the." Uh, for the, um, what do you call it? For the, for the software to, to do the calibration. So if you're, you know, if you're somebody who's a DIYer, you're probably, it's probably not worth it to pay for that function. If you're, you know, you're not doing it all the time. Uh, please start ending. Oh, okay. So I guess it does it like that. It's got to warm up 80 degrees Celsius. So let's, let's see when it's, when it gets to 80 degrees Celsius. I kind of like the screen on the OEM because it has the the bar bar graphs instead of this. So yeah, I bring it back once it warms up. See what it says. Test is done. Test result: possible failure. Too much vapor in the fuel tank. Cool down the engine for an hour because we don't have much fuel in the tank huh I mean <laughs> they only grabbed me like 20 bucks which is like 10 liters so this is like barely anything but there's 10% and 10% of the fuel in the tank so I don't know we'll see well that's it that's pretty much for the video I can't do the evap leak test to get an accurate res result because there's hardly any fuel in the tank and that's how much they only got me. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.